Hi there. So here I am in MapInfo uh, 17. This is a 64 bit version. And what I'm going to show you today is how to update uh, some vectors, a, uh, in this case, a, a grid um, uh, set of polygons uh, created by GridMaker tool um, from the basic um, tools that, tool extensions that come with MapInfo. And I'm going to update the grids with uh, height. Uh, from a raster. So I'm going to open up the SLTM, uh, an SLTM uh, file, raster file. That's the shuttle radar topography mission um, data, which is sort of USA, Germany and Italy um, combined operations. And um, it was data collected by the Space Shuttle Endeavour uh, back in February of 2000. So let's open that stuff and here we go it's just using the last sort of color template that I've used before it's um, when, when you do any work with raster you really should absolutely know your data you know and understand what you want to get from it um, lots of ways to visualize lots of ways to extract data so you really really want to know what your end game is what your end goal is so in this case I just want to uh, average up um, uh, height within sort of particular areas um, and, and also with that in mind you know consider how you actually want to display it I've sort of using this standard um, template if you if you click on the raster um, just to give you a general overview here if you click on the raster um, uh, tab here you can get various um, tools which are very useful such as raster info so it's given a complete overview cell sizes origins uh, the raster size um, and, and all this sort of thing. So um, current projection. So all, all of this um, can easily be viewed within the tools. I'm not going to, you know, talk all, all, all about these uh, things. There'll just be a few. Um, I'll probably do a full raster video in a um, sort of another more detailed video. So, but with cell value, for example, we can uh, click on full. And if I click on anywhere, it up pops, up pops a cell value. And when it, because it's full, it gives because the location and it also uh, brings up the, um, uh, the value of, of there. I've actually undefined that at the moment. I could should have set that to meters. Uh, and also you can capture the data. That's what full's for. But if you just select status bar, which is what I normally do and click down here on the right, You'll see cell value 1978 meters. So it, it depends how you want to uh, view the data, but just just that is is typically okay. Just on the status bar is what I use. Uh, in terms of the, the coloring, uh, well, just go to color template, look up tables already created for you, and just hold the mouse cursor over these these ramps, cursor, and you'll see it change straight away, which is. Uh, Pretty cool really it's pretty handy so as soon as I get to one one less psychedelic I'll uh, um, sort of accept it really Where's that one? Oh, that's, oh, that's quite a good one yeah let's go with that so anyway so that, that's how you quickly change color there's lot, lots of other options um, but uh, for another time so let's get our grid on here um, now the grid is a tool extension um, I usually have it loaded. I use it quite a bit. Um, so this is the grid maker, um, and it comes with map info and just lets you uh, uh, draw a load of graticules, a, a predefined um, uh, distance extents. So what I'll do is I'll click, I'll create close regions now, and, and I'm just making this really just to show you the tool and, and sort of just how easy it is to use um, polygon stats for raster stats. Um, but you, you know they, 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 they could exist already. You could have some kind of postcode admin admin boundary type data um, that you could just use. Um, so uh, I think actually I'm more or less going to accept all this. Um, Ten thousand meters. Obviously that will slightly be impacted by uh, the size. Um, if uh, depending on how far I extend the grid, um, change projection stuff. But I'll, I think I'll actually just accept all the all the um, values so I click on region and just make sure uh, I've got the right sort of pattern I think I'll yeah I won't have a fill um, that's fair enough uh, 
press OK, and now I just draw my grid. Let's draw it um, sort of that in the middle or something like that. How's that? Press OK. It's only 36 cells. It's a very small grid. More or less what I wanted. Um, so we've got this grid. Uh, what does it really look like? Well, let's just go to home and sorry, table, new browser. And you see it's got a description, column name, and row name. So it's automatically populated the data with some kind of lookup, which is fine. Now we go to um, raster and we choose raster operations. Now there's loads here and I will do more on this in the future, but let's just go to region stats. That's what you um, need, region stats. Click on that. So with region stats, I'll just remove this tool window. Um, so the input file is SRTM. So that's the shuttle data height. And uh, where am I going to, what am I sort of inspecting the data into? Well, if you click on more, um, first you can click on the vector file that you want to um, put in there and uh, to update. And secondly, you then can choose all the attributes you want. I actually only want the average. I think I'll, actually I'll, I'll have average in cell count, you know, based on this many cells what's the average I think that's fine so um, you know so there could be some average rainfall or height or average some kind of content in the soil nitrates or something you know it could be anything really uh, let's output to that and run I'll leave the rest but as you can see there's loads there's loads you know what which cells are, are got null values that sort of thing um, anyway I'll just leave it that keep it in process um, oh that's a good point so I created the grid um, but actually that's got unsaved edits because when he created I, di I didn't actually save the grid that I made so I always do that so save the table and now I run it it won't take long and there we go so um, there's a list of tasks it didn't take very long half a second to run that close that um, and as you can see I've now got main value the average value and the number of cells that were involved in making that calculation let's just go back to the map Let's get rid of this um, the, uh, tools, that tool. And now let's add just by dragging. So it, it was called region. So I'll just drag this into on, sort of on top there. And oh, let's create a, oh, created a separate, it separate? Uh, yeah, it has. It's, I didn't drag it quite right. That's better. So um, it opened up a separate map all on its own. I did my dragging poorly. Um, so let's um, zoom in a bit. So you can see the grid. Uh, and then let's turn off the original grid. So that's my grid. And we now have this, see this region here. So when I um, uh, click on info, for example, oh, that's a very wide info window. Uh, I click and we get all the data from there and we could label uh, like properties, label display, let's label with the mean, uh, let's use an expression, let's do, let's get, I think it's got decimal places and stuff in there so let's just um, do an int. mean and um, let's do put liters after might as well make it a bit bigger change the font let's make it um, let's put boxed uh, my there you go make it stand out won't it and then just turn on labeling and there you go so there we have our defined grid area like I said could be any kind of vectors doesn't matter you just choose the vector you, layer you want uh, and I've extracted the average height the average um, raster data um, within each one the average raster data within each one and um, uh, and then I pulled it through saved it in the file and used it as a label so uh, very straightforward thing to do you just um, go to raster and um, it's the raster options and region stats. I hope you find that useful. Thank you.